Boeing's Starliner crashed rapidly and severely. Some attributed it to poor workmanship. Was it a system error? But Elon Musk argues that the underlying problem is deeper. What really happened? And how did NASA resolve this difficult situation? Let's discuss it all in today's episode of In Our Studio. During the summer of 2024, audiences around the world anticipated what was supposed to be a landmark moment for Boeing, the long-awaited crewed Starliner mission to the International Space Station. It was expected to mark a moment of joy, a long-awaited success. Instead of celebration, it became an example of how even the most prominent players can stumble. What should have been a triumphant comeback was marred by a series of delays, technical challenges, and stranded astronauts. CST-100, also known as the Boeing Starliner, marked Boeing's bold participation in NASA's commercial crew initiative. The concept was straightforward yet ambitious. Create a spacecraft capable of filling the role of the retired space shuttle while offering a reliable method of transporting astronauts and cargo to the ISS. Ultimately, Boeing appeared to be the ideal candidate. Their history with NASA spans decades contributing to the iconic Saturn V rocket and numerous space shuttle components. With such an impressive legacy, who wouldn't put their faith in them? Then came SpaceX. At the time, many doubted whether this new competitor could truly compete with Boeing. Compared to the aerospace giant, SpaceX seems small, untested, and still building its reputation. However, the dynamics changed dramatically when SpaceX didn't just close the gap, they surpassed their competitors. They emerged as the first, and so far the only, U.S.-based private company capable of safely transporting astronauts to the ISS. This achievement changed the landscape and raised challenging questions. How could a company with such extensive experience like Boeing be so far behind? To understand the situation, we must look beyond the surface. The core problem goes beyond the technical aspects. It is financial. Elon Musk has emphasized that while there are capable engineers at Boeing and Lockheed, the cost-plus contract model that drives up costs must be eliminated. Musk has frequently acknowledged the competence of Boeing's engineers, and he is right. This organization has been a key player since the beginning of space exploration. Therefore, if engineers don't represent a challenge, what does? The crucial problem stems from higher management. Over time, Boeing's top management has transitioned from individuals with a deep understanding of aerospace engineering to leaders focused primarily on financial results. They excelled at maximizing profits from contracts, but often lacked an understanding of equipment functionality. A pivotal moment occurred in 1997 when Boeing merged with McDonnell Douglas. This merger fundamentally changed the very essence of the company. Boeing's previous ethos, centered on engineering excellence and creativity, was replaced by a corporate approach that prioritized shareholder interests, financial goals, and cost minimization. Unsurprisingly, this transformation coincided with a decline in Boeing's technical excellence and an increase in project delays and safety issues. So what is the compelling incentive that underpins the system? Cost plus contracts. While this type of agreement, once common in NASA's early years, seems advantageous in theory, it has significant drawbacks. Imagine asking a friend to build a model rocket and stating that they can spend whatever they want and you will cover the costs. In this scenario, there is no real reason to stick to the budget. The more they spend, the more they will earn. This is how the basic principle of cost plus contracts operates. NASA has used this structure for years with major contractors like Boeing and Lockheed Martin, but the approach is prone to inefficiencies. From about 2012 to 2014, Boeing's work on the space launch system and upper exploration stage experienced significant delays, with initial schedules extending by five to six years or even longer, while costs soared into the tens of billions. Boeing ultimately met its financial goals and secured substantial funding. However, the pressing question is, what did NASA and taxpayers actually receive in return for this funding? The ease offered by cost plus contracts created an environment of minimal challenge. With guaranteed payment regardless of project duration or cost, the incentive to pursue innovation or excellence was minimal. The emphasis shifted from creating the best product to simply maintaining the project, as longer timelines yielded greater profits.
Ultimately, this ease eroded the culture of quality that had previously been a hallmark of Boeing's engineering teams. When there is no pressure to deliver or improve quality, enthusiasm tends to wane. This decline is precisely what happened with the Starliner program. NASA astronauts working closely with Boeing and SpaceX observed a stark contrast. Astronauts Doug Hurley and Bob Benkin noted that Boeing engineers often ignored their input, while the SpaceX team actively welcomed feedback and considered the astronauts as collaborators on the project. SpaceX's willingness fostered trust and teamwork. In contrast, Boeing's reluctance had the opposite effect. Some astronauts were reportedly so concerned about Starliner safety issues that they opted not to fly it at all. However, the problems didn't end there. Inside Boeing, ineffective communication exacerbated the problems further. The design, engineering, and testing groups operated independently, seldom exchanging insights between divisions. Imagine three individuals tasked with creating a complicated device. One person designs it, another constructs it, and a third evaluates it, yet they hardly ever communicate. Everything may appear correct on paper until the assembly phase, when the product fails to function as intended. This precise scenario unfolded with Starliner software. Engineers examined small segments of the system independently, like the launch procedure, but they never conducted a comprehensive end-to-end -end test of the complete mission schedule. Consequently, when the spacecraft was launched, a minor timing mistake went unnoticed. The onboard clock was inaccurate, leading Starliner to believe it had already accomplished a vital engine burn that, in fact, it had not performed. Hence, the spacecraft found itself in an incorrect orbit and unable to reach the ISS. To worsen the situation, Boeing frequently depended on simulated components rather than actual hardware during assessments. While this might seem efficient in theory, it conceals genuine issues. For instance, one simulator failed to expose a thruster mapping flaw that could have led to a collision between the service module and the crew module during re-entry. These types of errors ought to be caught during ground testing, yet they were overlooked solely because the systems were never evaluated collectively under realistic scenarios. So what can be done to resolve this? Should Boeing dismantle everything and reinvent its culture from scratch? While that idea may seem appealing, it is a monumental task. Elon Musk proposed a much more straightforward but effective solution, abolish the cost plus contracts. By removing the safety net, the comfort that encourages inefficiency is eliminated, compelling everyone, particularly engineers, to concentrate on outcomes. Once again, this isn't about penalizing individuals. It's about establishing the appropriate pressure that fosters innovation rather than complacency. SpaceX grasped this principle early, primarily due to necessity. Upon entering NASA's commercial crew initiative, they did not benefit from a cost-plus arrangement. They functioned under a fixed-price contract, which meant they committed to delivering a functioning spacecraft within a predetermined budget. Think of it as saying, here's $50 to construct that model rocket. No additional funds, no excuses. This kind of agreement compels you to work intelligently, conduct smarter tests, and streamline processes. That experience influenced the entire outlook of SpaceX. The tight budgets and rigorous timelines during the development of Crew Dragon equipped them with the skills to simplify designs, test early, address issues swiftly, and never allow problems to linger until the final phase. It became a survival skill that evolved into a guiding philosophy. That same drive propels every action they take today. SpaceX creates prototypes, conducts rapid tests, encounters failures, learns, and continuously improves through iterative cycles. You can clearly observe this in the Starship Initiative. Every explosion isn't a failure, but rather information that contributes to the improvement of the next iteration. They also employ agile project management, more common in software development, where tight-knit, cross-disciplinary teams communicate directly rather than being siloed within a corporate structure. This approach ensures that design, engineering, and testing are connected in real time. This is evident in the Starlink effort where satellites are launched and upgraded rapidly based on real-time data and user feedback. Furthermore, SpaceX wisely keeps most of its critical operations in-house. This facilitates faster decision-making and tighter quality control. A key example of this is when they acquired parachute manufacturer Pioneer Aerospace after its parent company went bankrupt. To prevent potential delays, SpaceX integrated them into their organization to ensure the stability of their supply chain. They also operate in short cycles or sprints, similar to software development teams. Problems are identified and resolved before they escalate. Most importantly, they maintain a concentrated focus on what truly matters, 
every design choice begins with a single question. What is absolutely essential for the spacecraft to operate safely and effectively? Anything deemed superfluous is eliminated. This dedication to simplicity simplifies testing, streamlines repairs, and increases overall system reliability. This approach of continuous improvement, transparent communication, simplicity, and accountability is the key to SpaceX's success. It allows them to operate at a pace unmatched by traditional aerospace companies. In fact, companies like Boeing could certainly benefit from implementing these practices. However, sometimes even the most effective internal adjustments fail. For real progress to occur, the external framework surrounding the company must also evolve. This is where NASA comes in. It's no coincidence that the Starliner program has persevered through numerous setbacks and setbacks. Boeing's political affiliations and strong connections in Washington have been crucial factors in sustaining the program. Each year, Boeing invests millions of dollars in lobbying efforts, and this influence pays off. It provides a safety net that smaller companies can only imagine. Meanwhile, NASA has demonstrated unwavering trust. When the Commercial Crew Initiative launched, NASA naturally favored a company with a long-standing relationship. This trust led to increased funding and increased patience. However, patience has its limits, or at least it should have. But when consistently missed deadlines, prolonging what should have been a short project into a nearly decade-long ordeal. Last summer, their spacecraft even nearly endangered astronauts. However, NASA has not terminated the contract. They continue to publicly support the partnership, asserting that Boeing is still capable of delivering. That's all for today's episode. See you next time.